The hydraulic fluid in the tractor lubricates the moving parts in the transmission and also serves as the working fluid within the hydraulic cylinders. This is what enables the use of attachments like the loader and the grater that I have on this tractor here. Regularly changing the hydraulic fluid is an important maintenance item for two main reasons. First, as the transmission wears, small bits of metal will begin to accumulate in the hydraulic fluid. If these metal fragments get sucked into the hydraulic pump, they can cause real damage to the hydraulic cylinders. Secondly, unlike the engine oil, the hydraulic fluid is open to air, meaning that air is constantly being exchanged between the transmission and the outside. This air contains moisture in it, and this moisture can cause corrosion to the internal parts of the transmission over time. So to prevent the accumulation of particulates and to prevent corrosion, it's important to regularly change the hydraulic fluid. On this tractor, about every 600 hours. Today I'm going to show you how. The first step in changing the hydraulic fluid is to drain the old fluid. Here I have a picture taken underneath the tractor, looking at the bottom of the clutch housing and the transmission casing. The first drain bolt is located right here, on the side of the front drive casing. This is where the front drive shaft attaches to the underside of the clutch housing. You won't have this drain bolt on a two-wheel drive tractor. The second drain bolt is right here, on the underside of the transmission casing. All tractors will have a drain bolt at the low point on the transmission. Once both drain bolts have been removed and the fluid is drained, we then need to remove the hydraulic filters. This tractor has two identical filters placed side by side. Some tractors may have only one hydraulic filter, but on this tractor, Kubota decided to use two. At least one of these filters is going to have a magnet inside of it. This magnet is used to help catch those metal fragments that I mentioned earlier. Between the filters and the magnet, most of the contaminants in the hydraulic fluid will be removed, but not everything will get filtered out. This is why it's important to service the hydraulic system regularly. After replacing the hydraulic filters and reinstalling the drain bolts, the next step is to refill the hydraulic system with fluid. This is done through the fill port, located right here at the back of the tractor on the top of the transmission casing. This cap screws right off and the new fluid is poured directly into the transmission. Notice this black piece on top of the cap right here. This is the breather. The cap has a hole on top of it and this rubber piece is fitted over it to help prevent dirt and water from getting into the transmission. This is where air is exchanged between the transmission and the outside. Real quick, you may be wondering, why do we need that breather on the top of the transmission casing? Why do we need it to be open to air? Well, the answer is simple. And it's that as you're using the hydraulic implements, so as the piston rods are moving in and out of the cylinders, the volume of the hydraulic system is changing. Let's take a look at these diagrams and you'll see what I mean. In the top diagram, you can see that when the piston is extended, the cylinder is full of fluid. But when the piston retracts, much of the space that was previously fluid is now occupied by the piston rod. So where does the excess fluid go? Well, it goes back into the transmission casing. And if the transmission casing were sealed, you'd have a massive buildup in pressure. So the solution is simple. Just put a breather on it. That way, as the fluid moves back in, air can be pushed out and there's no change in pressure. And similarly, once the fluid flows back into the cylinders, so once the rod extends again, fluid will flow out of the transmission casing and air will flow in from the outside. That will prevent the formation of a vacuum. So basically the whole point of the breather is to ensure that the pressures within the transmission remain constant as you're using the hydraulic implements. One way in which changing the hydraulic fluid differs from changing the engine oil is that unlike with the engine oil, when you drain the hydraulic fluid, you're not going to get everything out of the system there's going to be a significant amount of fluid remaining, particularly within the hydraulic cylinders and the hydraulic lines. Because of this, you can't just go to your operator's manual and look up the total capacity of the system and use that number as the basis for how much fluid you put back in, because if you did that, you would add way too much fluid. Instead, what you have to do is, you have to see how much fluid came out and then put that same amount back in. But before doing that, it's always a good idea to check the dipstick on the transmission to make sure that the level was actually correct to begin with. So let's do that now. The transmission dipstick is right on the back here. Let's see what we get. That dipstick is completely dry. There is not a drop of hydraulic fluid on there. So what that tells me is that we're going to have to add quite a bit more fluid than whatever we get out of the tractor. That doesn't surprise me. This tractor has been very poorly maintained. I think I'm going to report my neighbor, who is the owner, to Kubota Protective Services. Okay, we're just about ready to pull that first drain plug. 
what I've done here is I've elevated the drain pan using some cinder blocks and pavers. That way, once the drain pan fills up, any excess fluid will flow out of the spout and into this five gallon bucket here. Between the drain pan and the five gallon bucket, this will hold seven and a half gallons, which is plenty. The total system capacity, if it were full, is ten and a half gallons. So this is about three quarters worth of a full system, and we're not going to get that much out, especially because we know the system isn't full and we're only pulling one drain plug here. So this should work. One other thing worth noting. Pull the dipstick before undoing that drain bolt. This will help prevent a vacuum from forming. Yes, there is a breather tube right there, but pulling the dipstick will help. <clears throat> Damn, that's tight. Sometimes that's a good thing. Unfortunately, this isn't one of those times. There we go. The tractor was so low on hydraulic fluid that I didn't even need the five gallon bucket as an overflow. But that's okay, we'll transfer everything over right now and then use the drain pan again for the second drain plug. All right, we're ready to undo the second drain bolt. There's no point in setting up the five gallon bucket again as an overflow, simply because the second drain bolt is higher up on the tractor than the first one. I don't expect to get that much fluid out. Let's see what happens. Oh man. <clears throat> Same problem as the first one. The impact wrench saves the day again. All right, let's see how much we got in total. almost six gallons. Now we're ready to remove the hydraulic filters. For this job, it helps to have an oil filter removal wrench. Here's a closer look at that magnet. These black particles here are those fine bits of metal that you get as the transmission wears. The magnet has filtered them out, which is good because you don't want them floating around the hydraulic system. This magnet can be unscrewed and removed, but there's really no need to. I just wiped it down with a shop towel and it cleaned up real nice. I'll put a picture of that up next. And here's the magnet after I cleaned it up. I also bent this shaft back so that it's now properly centered in the hole. Somehow it had gotten pulled down a little bit, and that made it difficult to get the hydraulic filter off. That actually didn't upset me though, because it likely means that at some point in the last 3,000 hours of operation, somebody did actually take the time to replace the hydraulic fluid and filter. So in that sense, it's not such a bad thing. I have two new hydraulic filters, and I'm just about ready to put them on the machine. But before I do, I need to check two things. First, I need to make sure that when I took the old filter off, the gasket came with it. This is the gasket. Sometimes when you take an old filter off of a machine, the gasket stays behind. You don't want that because if you put a new gasket on top of the old one, it's going to leak. Secondly, I need to apply fresh fluid to the new gasket. That's going to help it to seal better. I'll do that in a moment, but before I do, I want to briefly talk about the hydraulic fluid itself. I'm using Kubota's UDT fluid. This is their proprietary fluid, and it's not cheap. It's almost $30 a gallon, but I know it's going to work. Some people like to use an aftermarket fluid to save some money, but I think that's a bad idea because if you spend tens of thousands of dollars on a machine, you should use a fluid that you know for sure is going to work. You don't want to use an aftermarket product only to find that it has the wrong lubricating properties and you've done damage to your machine. 
But that's a value judgment that you're going to have to make for yourself. I use the filter wrench to just get it very slightly past hand tight. You don't want to over tighten. It's now time to put the drain bolts back on the tractor, but before I do that I want to quickly mention one thing. The drain bolts have crush washers on them. What is a crush washer? Well in this case it's a metal washer with a rubber ring on the inside, and that rubber ring is raised on both sides. The way this works is that when you put the crush washer on the drain bolt, and then you tighten the drain bolt back down, the crush washer compresses. It crushes. And that's what makes the seal. I've opted to replace both of the crush washers because after you use a crush washer, there's no guarantee that it'll go back correctly the second time. And these crush washers from Kubota cost only $1.50 a piece. If I were to reuse the old crush washers, put them back on the tractor, refill the system, and then find that it's leaking, I'd have to pull the drain bolt again. And in doing so, I could easily lose $50 to $100 worth of hydraulic fluid, plus all the time that I would waste. It's just not worth it. So when you come across crush washers like this, just replace them. We're just about ready to put hydraulic fluid back into the tractor. We're going to be pouring from five gallon buckets, which admittedly is a bit of a pain. Fortunately though, these buckets have spouts integrated into the lid. Here's how that works. The spout pulls out, the cap screws off, and you can pour directly out of here. One tip for pouring from a five gallon bucket that's really full is to pour away from the spout. That way the bucket has to be at a very high angle before anything comes out. If you were to tip it towards the spout, fluid's going to come out very quickly and it's going to be really easy to spill. In this next clip, I let the tractor idle for a few minutes and then move the loader arm and bucket around. The whole point of this is to let the hydraulic fluid circulate a bit and remove any trapped air before engaging the transmission. Okay, now we can check the dipstick again. There is still not a drop of fluid on that dipstick. Okay, now what I have to do is I have to add fluid in roughly half gallon increments and check the dipstick every time I do. Once I see the fluid on the dipstick, I'll start adding it a bit more slowly until I get it right between the lines. Thank you. 
There we go. It's just below the first line. I'll pull the dipstick one more time just so you can see what a proper reading looks like. That's right where it should be. Right in between those two lines. All right, this job is just about done. The only thing left to do now is to use the tractor for a bit and then check the hydraulic fluid level. It may need a little more, but we're just about there. In total, I had to add nine and a half gallons of fluid, but remember, I only got six out. The total system capacity is about 10 and a half gallons, which means that this tractor was missing about 35% of the hydraulic fluid that should have been in there, <laughs> which is just embarrassing, Dwayne. Anyways, as always, I hope that you learned something. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.